Everywhere you hear hallelujah, you are giving a, a, a shout of victory. And Jesus Christ typifies a victorious army. It's a congregation of overcomers. There are kingdom citizens that have assembled together to hallow their God. You have come to a council meeting for heavenly discussions so that you can go to the earth and show them how to behave. Am I communicating with us tonight? So every time we gather in his presence, we loosen up. As we loosen up, he comes in the enormity of his spiritual grace and power to now help you put the jigsaw puzzles of your life together. Give you a picture of a future he has actually prepared for you. So that you can leave the council meeting and go to town with your head held high, your shoulders erect. Why? As someone who is ready to take over his world. Is someone here ready to take over his world? I have never seen a citizen of heaven that is unfortunate. Neither have I seen anyone that is a, a second class citizen. Everyone born of God is born to reign on the earth. If you don't reign on the earth, I don't know where you will reign again. Praise God. Uh, because the throne of heaven belongs to him alone. And we are all his children. But he gave us the earth as a place to manifest our nature as a blessed candidate. So every time you have the privilege to come to church, no matter how they are troubling you over there, you have come for a council meeting where God makes decisions and his word is final. And today what is going to come on you will make you the finality of his word to men. God will show you forth to the earth as a sign and a wonder. What they never expected will happen through you will happen from you. What they never expected will happen in you will happen through you. Your amen doesn't sound like you are here. Alright, so uh, get set because God will do something in your life that will make you look like a newborn baby. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'd like to appreciate God for the privilege to stand on this blessed altar and to accept my brother's invitation to this Kingdom Citizens Assembly. Praise God. Well, if you didn't invite me, I won't be here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, one thing I've known about this, my friend, is that he has not changed. Age, age has not removed his nature. Praise God. It's always been like that ever since I know. But it's a highly sincere man, highly spiritual. I have a lot of respect and regard for him. He's been so consistent, no matter the environment or circumstances. I'm not saying this to make his head swell, but I have to confess what attracted me and made me stick with him as a friend since 1983. Praise God. I said, Praise God. You won't hear a lie from his mouth. Whether it is favorable to you or you don't like it, you will say the truth the way it is. And truth has kept him on. And truth will take him to higher heights. For every one of you that have, that have kept faith with this ministry and this man of God, I can assure you your destination is superior and higher than where you ever think. Now you see, when God wants to exhibit his divine purpose and agenda for man. He connects him to a prepared vessel whose purpose and agenda is to turn you loose into your ministry. There's a purpose for which you are here. You need a mentor. You need a teacher of the world who will help you see you the way you are by God's divine ordination and help you to marshal your pathway to a place where you will end up victorious in life. When you find such a man, keep touch, keep in step, receive the word with faith, act on instructions, and watch how your life will turn out. So I want to congratulate you all for being a part of this imagined ministry. Through this commission, I see Colorado changing levels. Um, God specializes in picking people here and there and then decorate them and then empower them and then send them to the town. 
That's how Jesus started with the 12 disciples who seemingly had no name or identity in the land. But suddenly, they emerged. He said, I will emerge. Say it as if you mean it, I will emerge. Suddenly, they emerged and became a center of attraction. Colors and creed doesn't matter. Where God plants your feet is where he has a mark you to reign. Are you communicating with you? Yes. Daniel, by mistake or by error of judgment or governance, found himself in Babylon. And then he began to reign. Ja Daniel reigned in five governments. I mean, kings reigned and died. And Daniel was still in charge. Another one came and died. And you know, kings don't have terms. They only end their terms by death. So, one, two, three, four, five kings. And Daniel was still relevant to the needs of the government. Welcome to your season. I said, welcome to your season. I said, welcome to your season. Because God will not only decorate your life, but make you a blessing to your generation. Okay, let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you for this moment you have prepared to do something fresh, something new, something heavenly in our lives. I'm asking that you will, through my mouth, minister to your people and through your own hands, touch them, transform them, humiliate the enemy over them and release them into their dominion era, into their season of generational blessings. You didn't bring them here not only to be blessed, but you, Lord, you brought them here to be a blessing. So what will graduate them from just being blessed to becoming a blessing, make it happen here. Make it happen here. Let everyone here in the sound of my voice become a sign and a wonder. Let this service not end until somebody's healing happens. Let this service not end until somebody's solution is delivered. Let this service not end until somebody's turn around happen. Let this service not end until somebody's inspiration is released let every one of us including the one talking here be blessed in this service today in the name of jesus christ take all of us out of where we used to be to where we rightfully belong communicate virtue into us that will add value to our life that will attract men and women in town into your kingdom make today the day of your blessing in the name of jesus christ i decree healing right now to everyone's body that is healing him. Whatever the source of that pain, I curse it in the name of Jesus. Whatever the source of that concern, I command it turn around. I lose the virtues of heaven's power to search through your system right now. From the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Receive deliverance now in the name of Jesus. I command healing to that eyesight. I command healing to that back pain. I command healing to that knee cap. I command healing to that arm. The joint in your arm that is giving you some serious pains. I command healing right now in the name of Jesus. I lose the healing virtues of Jesus into this house. And I decree that if they call it incurable, you have come before the cure. You are not living here without affliction. In the name of Jesus Christ. Someone here that has issues with his career and business. You're wondering what next step to take. You're wondering what next move to make. You're wondering what's going to happen next. In fact, you have come to a point where you are thinking you want to check out of town. But God is helping me to tell you this morning, uh, straighten out yourself. Pay attention to me and I will show you that the land belongs to you. I have set your feet on this ground to serve the Lord and no, no situation of life will confound you. If only you will pay attention to my instruction, you will discover in the place where you have been rejected, you will be in the same environment, you will be celebrated. That's a word for somebody here this morning. And I decree that that word prosper in your life. I decree that that word prosper in your life. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. God gave me this scripture. If you will sit down, write it down, and if the studio can help us, put it there. Jeremiah chapter 29, from verse 4 to 6. Take it as a highly prophetic word from God. And you know every word that comes from his mouth will not return void. It will accomplish the purpose for which it has been sent. He said in Jeremiah 29 verse 4, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives, 
whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Now, verse 5. This is like an aberration to what verse 4 is saying. You'll be carried into, into Babylon as captives, but hear the word of the Lord. You will build houses and dwell in them. Now, do captives build houses? But you will build houses and dwell in them. You will plant gardens. In other words, you will start businesses. You will open up avenues of diversities, of enterprises, and you will eat the fruit of them. I don't think you are taking that word personally. If you are taking it personally, your amen will sound to the top of the roof. Whatever has held you captive, God is saying in summary, I'm changing your story. Wherever they have told the time your destiny down, God is saying, I'm changing your story. Amen. That in the same environment, you will build houses. And that's talking about real estate, right? Yes. Not just house, houses. To have houses no longer a property is uh, real estate. Thank God for the one, but it's going to be multiplied. Amen. If you believe it's happening this year, Amen. this is just June. Between here and December, longest time for God to fulfill His word. In a radical dimension, the Holy Ghost will visit you. You will build houses. And you will not just build them for sale, you will dwell in them. And you will plant gardens. In other words, you will establish businesses, conglomerate of businesses, enterprises. And you will enjoy the benefits of ownership. Did you hear what I'm talking about this morning? And verse 6 said, then you will take wives. And so for those of you who are not married. Praise God. You will take wives. If you are not married, say amen. And you will have children, sons and daughters. And then you will marry for your sons and your daughters. I mean, you will live long enough to, to help your son and daughter get married. Is that not a blessing? Okay, so I receive it in Jesus' name. You will give your daughters in marriage and your sons in marriage that you may be increased and not diminished. You will not reduce. Nothing in your hand or in your life will come down. God is changing your story. If I were you, my amen would sound louder. Well, that came suddenly. It's not in my prepared message. So receive it as a word from the Lord and it will not return to him for it. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now activating the wonders of generational blessing. Just like God's servant have uh, favorably uh, succinctly give us that powerful introduction. Generational blessing is our ordained covenant with God as redeemed children of God. If we are born again, we have been redeemed from the cause of the law, according to Galatians 3, from verse 13, for one purpose, that we may be a reflection of his plan that was enacted with Abraham. God is the God of purpose. He's the one who sees the end from the beginning. So as he was talking to one man, he saw you. He saw me. He was talking to one man, proclaiming to him the kind of things he wants to do in the future of a personality traceable to his kind of person in Abraham. He said in Genesis chapter 17, verse 1, praise God. Is this one better? You think so? Hallelujah. Are you hearing me better now? Okay, Genesis 17, verse 1 to 9. He called Abraham, he said, I'm going to enter a relationship with you, and that relationship won't stop with you. You know, it's very interesting when God speaks to you as a person and says, I'm going to change your story, I'm going to bring you out of your captivity, I'm going to bless your life, I'm going to increase you, you are happy, you are glad. But God is saying, look, 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 my, my, my relationship with you, if it ends with you, you are unfortunate. 
If my relationship with you ends with you, you are unfortunate. You know how? Because the way I introduce myself should know that I'm bigger than who you are and what you ever need. Will you go to Genesis 17 with me, studio? Verse 1, And when Abraham was 90 years old and I, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said unto him, I am what? I didn't hear you. I am what? See, the way you introduce yourself uh, shows the picture of your capacity, your ability, what you are and what you can do, who you are and what you can offer. You understand what I'm talking about? God told Abraham, I am almighty. I am almighty. I am almighty. I am almighty. I am all might. All might. I am. Might. Talks of power. Talks of ability. Talks of capacity. Talks of capability. Abraham, in case you have situations, you have circumstances, you are hedged in, uh, understand who is coming your way. I am all. I've never seen a mortal man that introduced himself like that. Have you found one? I'd like you to introduce me to that person. <laughs> I am almighty God. Political might, economic might, spiritual might, financial might, emotional might, psychological might. Whatever might can be found is in me. So all I'm asking you is, you walk with me. <laughs> now if you got someone that comes to your house and introduces himself and says, walk with me, what will you do? You say, no, I, I, I need to I mean, brush my teeth. I need to take a bath and then I'll follow you. No, you forget you've not even brushed your teeth. You forgot you, you, you even forgot you are in your pajamas. You run after him. You run after him. You know why? Who doesn't want all? Who doesn't want all? Everybody wants to wake up and appear as all sufficient, looking for nothing. And you find someone who is introducing himself to you that I am all. Man, I'm lazy enough <laughs> and intelligent enough to know that would be my best friend. Anything he tells me to do, I won't check it up. When he says sit down on the bare floor, I sit. Why? It is in sitting down that is all we meet me. Am I, am I saying something to you? And that's exactly what Father Abraham did. He paid close attention to that introduction and used introduction to manage his perspectives and set to with the one who can make him a reflection of his all. I am almighty God. Verse 2. Quickly. And I will do what? Make my covenant between me and you and will multiply you exceedingly. We're going to verse 7, so move very fast, please. And Abraham fell on his face. What does that mean? Complete submission. And God talked with him. When, Abraham, when God saw Abraham's response, he did what? He began to open the new chapter of that relationship. May God open the new chapter of his relationship with you today. Amen. And God began to talk with him, verse 4. Saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be a father of what? Many, many nations. In other words, your children will come from many nations, one, or your children will be the foundation of many nations. Is that of the two? Your children will be born in different corners of the earth, or... Your children will be the brain behind the emergence of nations. Amen. And I think you fit in into either of the two. Or don't you think so? Amen. I think so. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, neither shall your name anymore be called Abraham. I'm moving you out of your past. But your name shall be called Abraham. Why? Because a father of many nations have I made you. And then verse 6 said, and I will make thee exceeding fruitful. And I will make nations of thee. 
and things shall come out of this. So if I'm privileged to come out of the loins of Abraham, what am I expected to be? Who can tell me and I'll give you a dollar? What am I expected to be? Good. I owe you a dollar. <laughs> Praise God. That's, that's it. If I'm connected to Abraham, if Abraham happens to be my spiritual father, I'm out of the loins of Abraham, then I, I, can't, I can't come here and be behaving like a slave. No. I might be like a baby now, but I'll grow up to enter the shoes of my father. So I have to be trained on how to be a king. How to respond to life issues as a king will respond to life issues. Am I communicating with you? I'm taking you somewhere. Please follow me. And God continued and said, I will establish my covenant between me and you. And for your information, between your seed after you in what? There are generations for an everlasting covenant. To be a God to you and to your seed after you in their generations. So if Abraham happens to be my root, then I am in the lineage of kings and rulers and a blessed personality. You have to accept this. Before your perspective can gain ascendancy into the fullness of God's purpose. If you won't accept it, your behavior will show what you accepted. Praise God. That is where our life began from. The promise came from Genesis chapter 1. Sin took us away from that lineage. Abraham came to bring a reenaction of God's imagined counsel for mankind. And I want to welcome you to this new era where your life will be a reflection of the wonders that is in this generational blessing. We call it wonders because it is out of the ordinary. Praise God. God's relationship with Abraham was out of the ordinary. Everything God did in Abraham was a reflection of who God is, not a reflection of where Abraham came from in the natural world. Praise God. Abraham's father never made anything happen in his life. Bible history has it that he's a man that lived from tent to tent. He was never settled. His unsettlement caught up with Abraham. That at age 75, he was still in his father's house. When he got married to Sarah, he didn't have enough money to even rent a, a room. He married into his father's house. That's why in Genesis chapter 12, said, God said, come here. Come out. Come out, come out, come out. Come out. Come out of your father's house, out of your kindred. I want to begin a new race with you. And that's the race that is connected to you today. Amen. Welcome to a new phase of your life. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 3 verse 29 said, And if ye be Christ, if you are born of God, then you are Abraham's seed. And remember what he said in Genesis 17, I will bless you and make you a blessing and then bless your seed after you in their generations. And here, Paul is trying to help the Galatian church to see that, look, 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 look. You are not just a buffoon. You are not a biological mistake. You are not born into an environment that conditions you until you become something different. You are actually the seed of Abraham. The promise of the spirit is becoming a reality in your existence. So come to terms with this and begin to behave yourself like who you are born to be. Receive grace to partake of your portion. You are Abraham's seed and heirs. Heirs means inheritor. According to the promise. Remember Galatians chapter 3 verse 14. It is the promise of the spirit. That you will emerge as a blessing. According to what he said to Abraham. Praise God. So by redemption you are online. Not offline. You are online for a life of wonders. A life of exceptional results. For a man of 100 years old. To still be able to have a child. 
That's exceptional. And so for exceptional things to be happening in your life, your business and career, it is part of the deal. Come and say it is part of the deal. Say, 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 say it as if you may. It's part of the deal. It's part of the package. It's part of the package. When you get employed in an organization, they give you a rundown of their terms of contract with you. There are some things that are part of the package. Your insurance, your health insurance, your this allowance, your that allowance is part of the package. So you don't beg for it. You only work to earn it. Hello? And so there are things we don't beg for in the kingdom of God. I have never seen anywhere in the Bible where God says, ask for blessing. If you find the scripture, show me. That in one of your prayers, pray, oh God, bless me, oh God, bless me. Show me in the scripture. Even when Jesus was, was teaching his disciples how to pray, what did he say? Give us this day our, it's our right. It's in the package. <laughs> it's in the package. Give us. And he daily loaded us with benefits. It's in the package. Come and say it's in the package. It's in the now if it is in the package, it becomes you and I's responsibility to know what is in the terms of the covenant so we can live to inherit the blessings thereof. This Abrahamic blessing will move from you to your children's children. Amen. Your children will not inherit suffering from you. Amen. They will not inherit depths and sicknesses from you. Your children will not inherit oppressions from you. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. When I met my wife, she was asthmatic. Highly asthmatic. She carries two inhalers with her every day. If not that it was God that told me, that is your wife. I may have occasion to change my mind. Uh, because that time, is uh, any little dog. <gasps> <gasps> And then I will see her reach her bag and come out with that thing. I said, what's that? She said, it's one of those things. I don't know. It's not one of those things. I've never seen it before. She now told me since age nine, she's been battling with this. And they told her it's going to be for life. I smiled. I told myself inside me, I know what it's it will be for life, not this one. Amen. But see, standing on the conviction that it was God who told me this is my wife, I was able to go back to God and said, God, this is not part of the package. <laughs> I'm sure men are here. So when God gives you a wife, and she comes with certain challenges. Don't say, excuse me, I don't think we, we have, I can deal with this, so can you find your way out of my life? <laughs> no, no, God brought her into your life, and you are the head of the family, so prove to her that you're a good head. Amen. Face her challenges as a God representation to her. He said, Christ is the head of the, of the, of the, of the church, just like husband is the head of his wife and the savior of her body. So I am the savior of my wife's body. So if that cannot sit in Christ's body, it must not sit on my wife's body. So we engage series of spiritual battles over time. And asthma died. Say asthma died. Asthma didn't only die. It didn't continue with any of our children. Wow. None of our children had a trace. Amen. That is exactly what God is talking about here. Amen. That you are connected to a lineage that has a package that is not only for you, but it's transgenerational. That once you key it into it and you enjoy the functionality of it in your lifetime, your children will live to enjoy it later. Amen. Isaac engaging it, and then Jacob, and then Joseph, and on and on and on and on like that, and it's been on since Jesus came on the scene. So why should the church of today not be a manifestation of that generational blessing? We are not to be sharing troubles. We are supposed to be sharing wonders. Amen. Somebody didn't hear me. Amen. We are not supposed to be sharing troubles. We are supposed to be sharing wonders. Amen. Receive grace tonight. Amen. Or is it this morning in the name of Jesus Christ? Amen. 
Hallelujah. Now, if we must enjoy this unrestricted blessing and be a part of flowing in this midstream of God's covenant generational blessing, ceaselessly, continually in our lifetime, we must go back to the books and look and examine in detail the terms of the covenant. Remember when God told Abraham, I'm almighty God, are you interested? He showed his interest by bowing. I surrender. And the moment he did that, God began to open up the chapters of the covenant. And so when you look at the life of Abraham, we can pick lessons. Some lessons that he must have gleaned from God's instructions and which he tailored his life with that made him a physical manifestation of the promise of the spirit. God is a spirit. Anything we say, we say it from where he is. And that's why he blessed us with all spiritual blessings and which abide in heavenly places. Now, how does this spiritual blessing become utterly relevant to us and then to our children's children? Amen. That becomes our responsibility. Abraham discovered the promise of the spirit. He knew what to do to match up with the demand so that it can be a reflection of what God promised. And it happened in the natural I mean, Abraham was a physical manifestation of everything God said in the spirit realm. And if God did it, he said, do you know something? If you are a follower of Abraham and you are cut out of the stone which Abraham was cut out from, he says, so look unto your father, Abraham, and unto Sarah and follow what I told them to do. If you will follow them, you will appear like them. <clears throat> Our challenge is, brothers and sisters, is not in reading the Bible. Our challenge is, is in actually responding to the demands of the Bible. All of us who are employed or gainfully employed in one thing or the other, or we are in a private business or the other, there are demands of our jobs that whether you like it or not, you just have to wake up to those demands or you are nowhere to be found around the blessing in that environment. You can't earn salary from an organization. You will not go to work. You won't clock your coming in. Clock your coming out. You won't obey all the instructions of the organizations. You'll just be thrown out. Excuse me? You got first class? Yeah. First class brain. But um, third class response. <laughs> so get out. We don't need you anymore. Uh, well, what? what have I done? What have you done? You have not obeyed. What you put in here. So all of us sing the song, the blessings of Abraham are mine. But you see, we forgot that before Abraham got the manifestation of the blessing, there are certain things he did. If he did it, we must find it and do it so we can be a reflection of it. God wants to see what you are doing so he can know what to do with his plan for your life. Can you see what he said about Abraham in Genesis chapter 22? Verse 16, he said, By myself have I sworn, said the Lord, because thou hast done this thing. Thou hast done this thing. Thou hast done this. Every time you are looking for a shift upwards in your life, find out what you should do. If you won't change your approach, you can't stop the reproach. You can't be doing the same thing the same way, year in, year out, and expect a better result. There has to be a change. I said, there has to be a change. Even the motivational speakers in town will tell you the things to do in order to get the success they have in mind for you. Now, that is theoretical. Now, this is spiritual. This goes deep down into the foundation of your creation. This goes beyond human imagination and concept. This is divine. This is original concept of the heart of God. He made you. He knows what it takes to make you tick, to make you glow, to make you succeed. To make you a center of attraction. He knows why he packaged you together. So if that's what he told Abraham, it's the only thing he can tell you. If Abraham obeyed, if you'll obey, you'll not only be called a friend of God. Everybody will call you a friend of God. It's a different thing for you to know your friend and others will know that that is his friend. Did you follow what I'm talking about? It will show in your life. So what are we expected to do? So many things in the life of Abraham. I'm sure your pastor has told you many of such. Maybe not on the same line, but he's saying the same thing. I want to key on one thing that is so significant. 
that looks like it embraces everything that has to do with your personality because it goes to deep down to the core of who you are and why you are created. And that is the word service. Service. Service is a common word. We use it every day. But um, sometimes we don't have the real understanding of what it means. To service. Service means to activate. It's to be available to render or contribute to making things happen for others. Now I say, but I'm a bundle of needs. I have so much need in my life that everybody in this nation has to keep pay attention to my needs so I can be somebody. If only I can have everything I need, then I'll be a blessing to everyone I want. Because they know from where you are. Serve. Serve me first. Now serve is you. That's exactly what Abraham did. He said, walk with me. It is a walk for me. Remember Genesis 17 that we read? Abraham, I am almighty God. Now you walk with me. Can I disturb you a little? Can I disturb you a little? Do you mind? Come over here. Praise God. Primate, sir. Apologies to disturb your... Please. <laughs> as long as I have this mic, I'm in charge here. Okay, <laughs> now, you are Abraham. Yes, sir. I am almighty. Ah, yes, sir. Now, I say, walk with me. To walk with me means take steps as I take steps. Follow my dictates. That's all I want from you. You know why? I don't need anything from you. I am all. That's right. Now, you walk with me. Walk. If I take the left leg and you take the right step, you are walking for yourself. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Walk with me. <laughs> you are not walking. Oh, okay. right. <laughs> that, that calls for your sensitivity. Amen. My demands are so, so little compared to your needs. But that's all I want. It's an understanding of Scripture. We open you to some dimensions of pastures that you don't have to sweat for. Amen. We like to walk for God. Let's do it. Let's do this. Let's go here. Okay, let's go here. So we should do it. Okay, okay. I can carry it. I can carry it. I can do that. Yes, I can sweep the floor. Yes, I can clean it up. Oh, yeah. Everything. Yes, yes. God said, what are you doing? I'm, I'm working for you. I said, sorry. I didn't ask you to work for me. I ask you to work with me. Thank you, sir. God does not use people. God responds to people who respond to him. So many times we are full of activities. But we are not responsive to the only thing he demands from you. And see, the things he demands from you are in his, in his sight. The simplest of all things for you to do. But you prefer the hard stuff. So if I fasted 40 days and 40 nights, Oh God! I pray seven hours. Congratulations. You are trying your best. Walk with me. If that's all you will take home today, it will command a U turn in your entire scope of life. Brothers and sisters, I needed to understand this many years ago. Before I began to realize that there are many years of labor that have been wasted because I was doing it for men. I was doing it for him. You can't serve a 
outside your heart in an acceptable dimension. You must be available to be a contributor according to his dictates. Service is giving a helping hand. It is more of an attitude than servitude. When you have the spirit attitude to serve God, it becomes easy to serve men under God. I want to pray that the Holy Ghost will give you understanding and remove the scale covering our eyes as natural men. That the many activities we're engaging didn't start from our attitude. It started from our selfishness at trying to attract people's attention to us. You know, I'm leading worship. Men can see me. I can sing. And when I sing, the anointing falls. And people fall under the anointing. I mean, when your anointing is making people fall, it doesn't mean they are blessed. It means their leg was vibrating. I mean, their leg was weak. A blessed man doesn't have to fall to radiate blessing. Amen. I don't have to vibrate to tell you the Holy Ghost is on me. Say, what's happening? It's the Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost is moving me. If that's the way the Holy Ghost has been doing, he would have died many years ago. And you can't be vibrating like that for long. And every part of your body won't lose bolts and knots. Praise God. So it is not in the shaking and vibration that shows the potency of his presence. It is the quietness of the delivery of a change of levels and phase. Just, just changing people noiselessly. Hallelujah. Amen. Service is an act motivated by selflessness and an attitude of godliness. God functions by serving. He wants you to function by serving. God ordained continuity of life through a heart given to serve. Let's take a cue from Abraham. Look at some areas he showed godliness. I said service is next to godliness. Is attitude cultivated to be like God to mankind. Those are the details that Abraham got. Number one, he reflected it when he when he took Lot with him. Remember, Lot happens to be his nephew, the child of his brother who died. The brother died, the wife died, and Lot was left as an orphan. And then you remember Genesis chapter 12, God called and singled out Abraham, and God singled him out to be blessed. If it were you, you would just disappear from everybody else, and they're wondering where you have gone. As he was going, he knew the helplessness of his nephew. He took him along. Now, Abraham had so many needs. He wasn't so much carried away with his own personal need. He reached out to also be a help to someone else. God did not tell Abraham, I'm calling you, and on your way out, remember your nephew. No father, no mother. And you know your father is as helpless as you are. So to leave your nephew with him is to bury him with your father. But Abraham carried Lot with him. And that was the beginning of the change of, of, of Lot's life. Genesis 13. Blessings began to flow in. And it was reflected in Lot that God did not call. But Abraham's heart of service reached out. He served Lot. Abraham served Lot. Abraham was like a God to Lot. That without, without Abraham, there was no Lot. 
even though Lot gave him a lot of trouble and concern. But Abraham was a God to Lot. Just like we make all manner of mistakes, create more problems for ourselves, and we still call on God to come and solve it. That's exactly what Abraham did. He was a God to men. Walk with me. I need a representation on planet Earth to be able to reach men. And I'm going to reach men through you in order to multiply the blessing in your life generationally. And so you, your work with me will enact that medium into an operation. So Abraham was selfless. That was the foundation of his ability to get God's attention. Number two, when Lot got into trouble, Abraham still went to rescue him. Get to Genesis chapter 14, verse 12 to 16. They captured Lot. An enemy nation came to where he was abiding. If you get to Genesis 13, you will know the kind of stupid act that Lot engaged in. Now, this is your big brother who is trying to help you. And then you are having blessings, as Abraham is having. You have men servants, you have slaves, you have all manner, cattles and all manner. And then they now say, okay, now instead of our cattles and our servants fighting each other, let's divide camp. Go and set up somewhere, I set up somewhere. And he said, Lord, pick anywhere you like. Now if it's a humble lot, he'll say, oh no, brother, you tell me where to go. Without you, I couldn't have been here. Lord said, <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, I pick here. And where you pick happens to be the greenest area, the most um, productive alley. But it is next door to Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the land of sin, land of godlessness. But the physical things there attracted a lot. And he picked the juicest part of the domain. Abraham said, no problem. Go ahead. Take all you want. When all Abraham had left was a desert, God said, now, look up. I just want to begin my race with you. You have just proved to me I have found a representative on earth. Now, what you call a desert will soon become the center of attraction. That was what happened. But Abraham did not, because of what Lord did, forget him. Am I communicating something to us? You are here as a God representation. As a seed of Abraham, you don't close your eyes to the needs of people around you. You are not helping them because they are your friends. You are helping them because you are God's agent. You are serving God by serving men. Someone in the hospital has a need, you are the first to get there. You don't need all the money. Your presence alone can bring healing. My brother, be encouraged. Yes, sir. You will, you, you'll be discharged tomorrow. Amen. The God we serve won't allow you to be here. Amen. You just lost a job. Oh man, you can't lose a job. You can't lose a job. You can't lose a job. You, you can't lose destiny. A job is just a location. Uh -huh. But your location is not from a location. Your location is divine. Amen. Am I communicating with you? Your own word of encouragement. Yes. Not, ah. Uh he -huh. was sacked. Hey. Mm, I'm saying it. Why can't you be shocked? Amen. We all come to church. We don't know what everybody is doing. Don't be sad. It's not my business. And God says, Is that so? You are next. <laughs> on the sack list, you are next. And he said, I don't know why this is happening to me. I sing in the choir. I'm the rest of the pastor's assistant. Why should all this be happening to me? Because you are not representing God, you are representing yourself. <laughs> Praise God. Is somebody learning something this morning? Abraham. Cut it with God. You will catch it with God. Amen. He went and rescued Lot. When God was going to, when the enemy was going to embarrass him, he rescued him, rescued his wife, rescued his property, and he said to him, so forever in Lot's life, without Abraham, he will have ceased to exist. When you get to read that scripture, 
Genesis 14, 12 to 16. Number three, God told Abraham, I'm going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. Their sin is smelly. It's that I've risen to my throne. I can't stand it anymore. And God said it. Abraham said, God, you destroyed Sodom. <laughs> you didn't make any division between those who live there and what they do there. Suppose there are 50 righteous people. Abraham served God through intercession. He wasn't from Sodom. He could have been delighted for God to rain down brimstone and fire. Destroy them. In fact, they are an aberration. In fact, kill them all. So I will expound my coverage area. So no. Suppose there are innocent people there. There are righteous people in that land. You are a righteous God. Won't you do right? For a man to be able to stand before God. Just know he has changed level. He has, he has carried an attitude that made him a God on planet earth. He was the supervisor of everything that happens here. God, you won't do that if there are 50 people. Ah, God said, okay. You made a point. I won't. For 50 people's sake, I will spare Sodom and Gomorrah. <laughs> Abraham said, take it easy, God. Get home, read Genesis chapter 18. Suppose there are not up to 50 and find only 30 there. Will you, because of 30, forget about their life? He said, no, for 30 sake. Uh, God still say, my mouth is too much. I mean, you have given me this privilege to relate with you as a friend. Suppose there are 20 people there. I wish Abraham had said there's only one person there. <laughs> Sodom and Gomorrah will still be existing today. But maybe he felt he was uh, pulling his uh, opportunity too far. So he stopped. And when God looked, he couldn't find. And he destroyed them all. But what am I pointing out? Abraham served Sodom and Gomorrah. He served the believers in Sodom and Gomorrah. He interceded for their survivor. Not because of Lot. Lot can't be 50 people. Did you get what I'm talking about? But because of his passion, his God naturedness, abhors evil. When you are happy, when your fellow brother or sister is in trouble, you have a Satan seed inside you, not God's seed. The beginning of your kingdom service starts with a heart. The heart. When it is in your heart, it is very easy to come out of you to, your manifest, to the manifestations of everybody around you. Am I communicating with us? Yes. Number four, Abraham served angels unawares because he was hospitable. That's hospitality service. We talk about prayer service. Intercessory service, rescue service. Did you get know what I'm talking about? Now, this is hospitality service. Genesis 18, verses 1 to 14. And you know, because Abraham was selfless, he was able to connect to the blessing that God had in mind for his future. He didn't know these guys were angels on a journey. He just tried to help them to find some rest before they continue. And now the prophecy came. The word of the Lord came. This time next year, your wife is going to have a child. Amen. Suppose he hadn't done that. Maybe uh, he wouldn't have fulfilled destiny. 